Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK and talking on a variety of subjects. Today the subject is the Universal Basic Income, otherwise known as UBI. Now it's something that they're currently promoting in America. But as you know, what happens over there is happening over here. Well, they've got a presidential candidate by the name of Yang, an oriental gentleman, and he's promoting this big time. And the reason why I'm introducing it to you is because I think you have to, well, you don't have to, but I think it's good to be aware, if you're not already aware, what people or how people are thinking. Now, in America, um, five billion jobs have been lost to automation. No, five billion jobs have been lost, four million of them to automation. What this young gentleman is saying is that the jobs lost to automation are going to be charged a, a robot tax because um, robots are now what's taking over all the jobs. And what he's saying is that this universal basic income is going to come from the robot tax. He's saying it's totally different from universal credit as we know it. What happens with universal credit in his scenario is that everybody, regardless of whether they're rich or they're poor, would be getting a thousand pounds a month from universal um, basic income. And you can opt not to have it if you don't need it. But what he's saying is that it will give everyone the essential, you know, money to just live, um, have all the essential, um, meet the essential criteria then. Um, so under this scheme, I'll call it a scheme for want of a better word, um, it's supposed to... Well, what he's saying is with the universal credit, you're de-insensitized because if you get a job, you lose that money. You no longer get the thousand, you no longer get the thousand pounds universal credit would give you. Say that was the amount you were receiving because now you're getting an income and they claw that back. But with this universal basic income, you get that money regardless of how much you earn. So what they're saying is, is that it insensitizes people to, uh, to work. Now, what I'm thinking is, OK, if all these jobs are being taken over by machines, what jobs would people be motivated to go and get? Because what they're saying, all the low skill jobs are going to be automated. Um, truck driving, I mean, we've got driverless cars. They're talking about driverless trucks. Um, the tellers, they're already automated. You know, uh, you, the people in the warehouses, that's already automated. So unless you're a computer analyst or a scientist or something, what jobs are people going to be insensitized to go and get? That's what I don't understand. So they're saying it's supposed to boost the economy. People will have money. People will be going out and getting jobs. But what jobs? So under this new scheme, this is what they're working towards because, it, you know, they reckon by, I think it's the year 2028, 30% um, or 40% of the economy is going to be automated. It is going to have an effect on people's work and income because most of the work the routine work will be done by machines and what they're saying is that with people they need annual leave they're off sick they can only work eight hours a day i mean some people do do overtime but you know you have a legal limit with machines they work 24 7 you don't need to give them any benefits they just keep working and they just keep producing but what I'm thinking of is that if they're producing and producing and they're manufacturing all this stuff, for those people whose jobs is taken, where are they going to get the money to buy the stuff that these robots are making? 
You're not going to be able to do it with a thousand quid. What Yang is saying is that thousand quid will go back into the system as people buy food, um, buy essentials and that kind of stuff. So they're not even keeping that money. He reckons that this is how the life should be, where people shouldn't have to worry about an income. So under this scheme, they um, the income from the sorry the universal the universal basic income is what pays people. Now that is reliant on the people who run the processes. Will, are they going to be willing to dip into their profit to give everybody a thousand quid? They reckon they're going to reek lots and lots of profit. Suppose they don't make as much money as they thought. You're going to have people without jobs and you're going to have um, owners of these robots who don't want to um, subsidise um, a society or a country or whatever it is they're meant to do. The whole point I would have thought is of having robots is to make money and make profit. And if you're telling these people that out of that profit, they've got to pay society, everybody a thousand pounds, regardless of whether you're working or not. I can't see that going down very well. But this is the idea. This is the idea, you know, rather than give people welfare, which they which goes through so many processes and it has to be checked and all of this stuff, blanket, everybody gets a thousand quid. On the surface, it does sound it does sound okay, but there again, if everybody gets a thousand pounds and it doesn't matter whether you work or not, how is how are people going to feel if it pays their bills? Are are they gonna have enough to do? Are they going to lose their sense of purpose? Are they going to be happy just taking a thousand pounds a month and not knowing what to do? It's not enough to go away on holiday, really. Once you have to pay all your bills and stuff like that, how is that going to make you feel? I don't know. What your comments? Because I mean, if I was giving being given a thousand pounds a month. But then, I mean, I have quite a few hobbies, so I think that would suit me down to the ground. But for a lot of people who don't have hobbies or interests, it might not be the answer. But then again, if they're without a job um, anyway, that would be good. If they get a thousand pounds instead of going through this regime and the humiliation of going to universal credit, I'm sure thousands of those people who are out of jobs would be look on this with you know as a godsend but at the same token you have to ask yourself where will this go if everything is automated what will you buy where will you get the money to buy what they are making and will it last will the process last or will is it a fantastic idea and then it falls through these people who have automated, don't make enough money. They can't pay the people who are out of jobs and everybody is poor and below the poverty line. Scrambling around like animals. I don't know. So let me make, make sure I've covered, um, apparently, um, UBI is an idea that goes back centuries, 16th century. Philosophers thought of a system where each individual was relieved of the burden of worry over their essential needs. Milton Friedman, he, he brought about the negative income tax. He's a Nobel Prize winner. Uh, this, is, this UBI would be guaranteeing everyone with a minimum living wage income. And it seems to be popular. Um, everyone would get a monthly payout to cover their basic living needs. In a modern world, um, the implementation of why we need it is more complex. Um, estimated job loss by automation is 20 to 30 percent by 2038 or 2030. I can't remember. Um, machine, the people who are going to lose jobs through automation or likely to lose jobs through automation are machine operators, clerical workers, service and sales, agriculturals, professionals and senior officials. The thing is, is that what happens when these machines go wrong? I've been at work where the network goes down 
and it causes chaos because what they're saying is we're working in a paperless environment so we've got no paper and then when the systems go down it's chaos so what happens when these machines go down they're not infallible what happens then that's what i'm saying i'm very very dubious because if these machines fail and they're not making that profit and there's and they're unable to give us everyone who they say the thousand pounds you're up, the, you're up the creek without a paddle, aren't you? Now, this Yang, he's actually promoting this idea as a part of um, this, his presidential campaign in America. And I'm not sure. It sounds good on the surface, but I don't know. He hasn't given us any of the negatives. Apparently, a lawyer was compared to artificial intelligence and tasked to review a non-disclosure agreement. It took the lawyer 92 minutes with 85% accuracy. It took the machine or the robot 26 seconds with a 94% accuracy. So when you're looking at that and how much you people pay lawyers, you can understand why. You know, when they have to review all these complex documents and they're charging people £300 an hour, and a machine can do it in 26 seconds. The thing with machines, empathy is zero. There's no, it's like when I was talking about the home office, when they go through those, um, the applications, they, they cannot empathize. They can't distinguish between a serious or sad case or a, a case that requires empathy from another case and so it's just a blanket decision and in certain cases empathy is required or some kind of um i don't know what you call it streamlining investigation analysis um judgment call personal um intervention sometimes that is required um, but what they're saying is less humans to do the same amount of work. And you know it's all about profit, 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 money, money, money. But then I think even if they're making all this profit and they're getting all of this stuff to make money, they have to think about who's buying the products. Unless you're thinking about shipping them out. But if it's going to be a universal thing around the world, then everybody's going to be in the same situation, aren't they? No one's going to be in a position to... Um, to buy anything but maybe we won't need anything providing we have food and you know we have our creature comforts met maybe that's what we're meant to do because that's what they're saying living a life without worry the working poor these are the people who earn below the poverty line despite actively working and this is because of low wages lack of finances to keep them from getting a better job going back to school or college and what happens to these people whose jobs get replaced in the face of technology and artificial intelligence? So um, China got rid of, yeah, like I said, China got rid of 5 million manufacturing jobs, 4 million due to automation. I think it was China. Don't quote me on that. I'm not sure. Um, but he was saying, this Yang person was saying 30% of malls and stores are closing. Um, his name is Andre Yang. Um yeah, and like I said, whether you're rich or poor, you'd be entitled to it. Ah, dear. Um, what else is there? This supposed to incentivize people to work. Apparently, everybody gets, I mean, it's supposed to be that everybody gets a slice of the pie. But can you imagine that happening? This is what people have been asking for for years. Equality you know, a share of profits. Can you imagine people in power or rich people who are working and doing all this stuff, sharing that out and saying, OK, we've made um, 40 billion pounds profit and we're going to give 30 billion out to everybody so everybody can get a thousand pounds a month. Can you imagine that happening? I can't imagine that happening. People are too selfish. The thing is, you're dealing with humans. Yes, the robots are working, but who's manning the robots? Who owns the robots? And these are the people who have to make the decision whether or not they're going to fund society, whether or not they're going to give everybody a thousand pounds. 
Well, I think that is it. Yeah, so I thought you might find that interesting. Maybe not, but anyway, it's good to be, you know, it's good to talk about different subjects. Bye-bye.